Who is Gatsby? Who is Gatsby? Who is Gatsby? Who is Gatsby? Rich, obsessive, and naive. Gatsby is crazed, wackadoodle, and nutty as a fruitcake. Gatsby is optimistic, powerful, and flawed. While readers of F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby have a variety of ideas about the book and its main character, J. Gatsby, the critical articles over this text in recent years have shown certain trends in conversations. Fahime Kashmiri, Benjamin Schreer, and Barbara Will all discuss the importance of symbolism, race, and the American dream within the novel. This modernist piece is enjoyed by such a huge audience while leaving those readers in charge of finding answers to many of the questions that are left unanswered by Fitzgerald. Let's find out what a few of those readers think by taking a closer look at these three trends. Symbolism. Quote, one of the book's best qualities, which makes it classic and places it above others, is the author's inconceivable use of realism and symbolism, end quote. Fitzgerald is able to create characters and historical situations within the novel that connect to each other and are very possibly real. He's also able to create some beautiful symbolism. Authors of critical articles tend to bring up two important symbols. First, they discuss the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Kashmiri writes, Quote, the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg signify God gazing upon and criticizing American society as an ethical wasteland, end quote. Authors also discuss the green light as a symbol of American hope. Quote, as Gatsby's quest for Daisy is generally related to the American dream, the green light symbolizes that ideal as well, end quote. More on this symbol later in the presentation. Race. More surprisingly, I found a consistent trend in discussing the racism that is represented within the characters of the novel. Many have seen a, quote, recent outpouring of work that draws attention to dynamics of racialization in the novel, to how Fitzgerald's book engages discourses that render racial and ethnic differences recognizable, end quote. Many see Tom Buchanan as a typical upper-class white male in the novel who is threatened by any individuals outside his social and racial class. He wants to keep America just the way it is. Gatsby and other characters bring the other into the equation and cause a racial level to the story that some might not expect or notice. American Dream Quote, the novel offers a straightforward description of something called America or American Identity. End quote. This book symbolizes the 1920s America that we all know, and the deconstruction of an American dream, including the era of wealth. Quote, Nick sees Gadsby as the incarnation of this national impulse, this extraordinary gift for hope, using the same term, wonder, to describe Gadsby's desire for Daisy Buchanan and that of the first American colonists gazing at the fresh green breast of the New World, end quote. Each article points out how the authors think the green light goes beyond Gatsby's desire for Daisy. It becomes every American's desire to live out their dreams. Please have a listen and take a look to the passages I have chosen for analysis. Quote, On the last night, with my trunk packed and my car sold to the grocer, I went over and looked at that huge, incoherent failure of a house once more. On the white steps, an obscene word, scrawled by some boy with a piece of brick, stood out clearly in the moonlight, and I erased it, drawing my shoe raspingly along the stone. Then I wandered down to the beach and sprawled out on the sand." End quote. Gadsby believed in the green light the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther, and one fine morning. So we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past." End quote. The first one is the obscene word that Nick describes on the front steps of Gadsby's empty house. And Will pointed out such an interesting analysis here 
and I'd love to take a closer look. She notices Nick's or Fitzgerald's use of this obscene word. Nick erases the words that have been sprawled on Gadsby's steps. But why doesn't Nick tell us what the word is? Why is the word necessary? Why does Nick feel the need to erase it? Quote, what is perhaps most significant about Nick's reference to the obscene word is the illegibility of this word, its vanished status. For it is fitting that the sum of Gadsby's corruption, his obscurity and inter indeterminacy might be expressed by a word that literally cannot be read. Gadsby is indescribable. There are no words to encompass who he is. And with his vanishing state in and out of the book over and over again, we can't identify him completely. And so therefore the obscene word that describes him, there isn't a word that can handle that much magnitude and that much pressure. Obscene as that which is either unrepresentable or beyond the terms of presentable. Whatever the word scrawled on Gadsby's steps may be, the point is that we cannot know it. As I said, Fitzgerald cannot find the words to describe Gadsby and the obscene word matches the obscene nature and vanishing nature of Gadsby himself within the novel. She also adds, quote, what is surprising is the way in which the novel finally ends, with Gadsby's obscenity erased as speedily from the text itself as it is from the front steps of his house, end quote. It's as if Fitzgerald has chosen to remove all of the negativity that Gadsby has brought on himself in order to leave him as this great Gadsby that we know and love after finishing the book. In order for Gadsby to turn out all right at the end, to come to stand for America itself, his link to this word must be erased. And so it is. With Nick's foot raspingly scratching the front steps, Gadsby's obscenity is erased and his connection to what America stands for becomes intertwined forever in the minds of readers. The reference that I see within these passages is to that of the American dream, and Will points out a lot of information about that. Quote, and in a significant shift in pronouns of the novel's final sentences, Nick unites Gadsby's effort with a general, if unspecified, national collective. End quote. Fitzgerald moves to using the pronouns we and are. Quote, Gadsby and the Dutch are joined in contemplative wonder as they come face to face with their objects of desire. Both represent in their contemplation the last and greatest of all human dreams, end quote. Gadsby moves from the individual to the collective group of all American dreamers. Will continues, quote, the final lines of Gadsby establish America as eternal mode of human yearning, as a quest narrative that stretches across generations from the Dutch to Gadsby and hence from the Dutch to Gadsby to us, end quote. We are Gadsby, we are America, and Gadsby is America. Fitzgerald chose to erase Gadsby's negative portrayal at the end of the novel to make him the great Gadsby. He becomes this character aligned with the American dream. However, are there consequences to erasing Gadsby's negative thoughts and actions? Will also questions this, quote, yet to drown out the obscene is also to foreground the power of the obscene to disrupt and undo normative structures of social, national, and linguistic signification, end quote. This is where I see the modernist way in Fitzgerald's writing. In her article, The Great Gadsby and the Obscene Word, Barbara Will discusses the impact Jay Gadsby has on readers and on the story itself. As a character that truly belongs nowhere and exists in some scenes while vanishing in many others, Gadsby brings up a lot of questions for the readers. What did Fitzgerald intend? Will has two answers. Does Gadsby draw us, quote, toward the place where meaning collapses, end quote? Or is he, quote, a threat to the conventional language of narration, throwing into question the status of the acceptable or the normal, end quote? Should we question Gadsby or should we question the world? 
Gadsby starts out as the obscene. Nick can't even find the words to describe him. He frequently vanishes from the text. Quote, who Gadsby is remains just beyond the reach of the next remark, end quote. Not even the characters in the novel that are written to see deeper into the lives of the characters can see who Gadsby truly is. For example, Owl Eyes in the library and Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Gadsby is a threatening figure. He doesn't belong to the political or social whiteness of America. Tom Buchanan sees him as a racial figure who threatens to disrupt the typical American way. Gadsby isn't necessarily another race. It's his lack of placement for Tom that seems threatening. He doesn't belong. He disappears and reappears. Quote, the shifting, obscure, ever vanishing figure of James Gats or Jay Gatsby troubles the category of whiteness, problematizing the force of this category at a moment when such force is of crucial significance, end quote. However, Gadsby's death erases any obscenity or lack of racial belonging, and he becomes a representation of the American again. Quote, he vanishes from categorization and social or racial signification. Gadsby is purified by this gesture, end quote. He becomes united with the idea of the American dream. Gadsby is motivated by, quote, the evanescent and the intangible, end quote. Fitzgerald creates Gadsby to tell a very modernist story about a man who shatters normal beliefs and creates his own version of reality. He dreams about a world that goes beyond any expectations, and we dream right along with him. Kashmiri said it perfectly, quote, I would say with confidence then, Gadsby has not only outlived its period and its author, but that it is one of the books that will endure, end quote. Please feel free to build off of these or ask questions of your own, but I'm very interested in what you guys have to say to the following discussion questions. Number one, although Fitzgerald is able to follow the general rules of the modernist novel, how does he still create a classic that is on everybody's favorites list? Number two, Identify another strong example of symbolism in Fitzgerald's novel. Give us a passage in which it is used and discuss its purpose within the novel. Number three, how could Nick Carraway's love for Gadsby possibly alter our perspectives as readers? Are we viewing Gadsby with blurred vision? Are our perspectives tainted by the narrator's friendship with Gadsby? And number four, if you could write an obituary for Jay Gadsby, what would you say about this elusive, obscene, wonderful man? Use factual information from the novel to support your writing. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. My favorite book of all time. I absolutely love reading this over and over again, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Have a great week. Bye. The Great Gatsby is my favorite novel, and the craziest thing to me about it is that I hate every single character in the book and would never want to know any of those characters in real life, and yet when I read the book, I'm overwhelmed with the lessons that I can learn and how I can grow every time I read it.